curious where my kid, am I not seeing my Kaylin and you, cause she was at the other meeting. I just admitted Diane. So Diane is here. I don't okay. see my Kaylin. Hi Diane. Oh, we can see you now, Chris. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give one more second to see if McKellen can join us too, because she was at the other meeting too. And here's Eric. Okay, Daniel. Okay. Well, uh, Lisa, if you're ready, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 6.02. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. I know it's beautiful finally outside and we are all in here, but thank you for taking the time to come today. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, just some quick reminders before we totally get uh, started. I wanted to welcome all our guests uh, today. I think we have, oh, here comes Michaela and good. Okay, I'm gonna give her one second for her to be on camera. There you are, are you there, Michaela? Oh, I think there she is. There you are, okay, good. Okay. So we just got started. So I was just saying that we uh, just wanted to share again that we're committing to creating a safe space for all of us to have uh, conversations and uh, I want to encourage us all to have a constructive conversation today and always. Uh, one of the major purposes uh, of uh, public education is to ensure our students are recording in progress with the skills to become active citizens. And we need to model what we teach. Uh, so we are going to try to practice democracy always. So please listen, uh, assume positive intentions, allow others to be heard. Um, and another reminder is that the yeah, the school board meetings are meetings of the board in the public. So we have, if you go in that page one at the very bottom in the back of page two, actually uh, we have some guidelines for public comments. So to ensure that we're able to conduct our business uh, today, we're gonna uh, adhere to it. We were gonna, depending on how many people I'm gonna ask, we had 1.5 minutes. Uh, we were thinking 90 uh, seconds which is 1.5 basically <laughs> yeah, per, per person um, for public comments uh, and uh, microphones will be muted after that time. If there's not enough time at the beginning, we'll do more time at the, at the end of the meeting, just depending on how many people have. Uh, we have a pretty long package today, but it is important to hear from our community members. So with that, yeah, I'm gonna open it up to public comments. And like I said, we're so if you are planning to speak, please raise your hand so we get a idea. Okay, so I see two people so far. Is that Nikki and Becca? Okay, uh, Nikki. Oh, Hi, I see everybody. a few more. Oh, okay. Should I go? Can I start? Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah, okay. Mark, are you ready? Yeah, just one quick check in. Mark, are you with us? Yes, uh, give me okay. one second to restart right. this. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, okay, now I'm ready. Okay, go ahead, uh, Nikki. Thank you for your big. Hi, um, and thanks for giving me the time to speak. Um, I like I wrote everything down, so um, I'd like to uh, request that the board um, does not confirm the new Rumney primary uh, position, new hire position, um, until there's a fair and unbiased and transparent selection process. Um, some questions I have about the process that aren't able to be answered or weren't able to be answered were how the hiring committee was assembled um, by selection or volunteer. Um, and why the time requirement for the community volunteers changed so drastically and was so misleading. Um, first, it was said to be 16 hours in person over three weeks, and then it turned out to be just a few hours on Zoom over two days. Um, the lack of communication and misleading information um, is concerning, and I suspect favoritism, bias, and preferential treatment, um, and the lack of transparency in the hiring of our children's educators 
um, feels inappropriate and unacceptable. Um, so I'm asking for the board to require Rumney to redo the interview steps, um, making it transparent so that the school and or the community and the faculty can all be on board with the new hire. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for your comments. Hey, Becca. Hi, everyone. My name is Becca Mandel, um, and I'm a parent in Middlesex, and I have two kids uh, at Romney, one in pre-K and one in first grade. Um, and I want to echo some of the concerns that Nikki just shared about the hiring process for the new primary teacher. Um, my first concern is that an email was sent with only one day's notice to the community about um, the hiring committee. And the initial email did state that it would be require 16 hours of time, all of which is during normal business hours. Um, and so that's just one day is just not enough time for, for working folks to arrange that kind of time off to join a process that we would want to join. Um, so that's, a, that's concern number one. And then relatedly, the fact that um, it then took way fewer hours over Zoom um, meant that it was a process that I could have joined but didn't realize that I could have joined. And so it almost feels like a bait and switch there. Um, I know sometimes these things are hard to predict, but I think one of the things that I'm also very concerned about is how much time was initially blocked off for that hiring process. I've done a lot of hiring through my own work. Um, and especially when there's two very strong internal candidates, it's really unusual to block off that much time for a uh, um, for a for an interview process when you know you have two strong internal candidates um, and it's unlikely you're even going to have to bring in a, uh, an outside candidate for that. Um, and I think that the other um, the other sort of piece that's that's really important about that is that um, I you know I think that this is a, a collective bargaining agreement um, or that the hiring process needs to be um, in keeping with the, the rules of the collective bargaining agreement. And I believe that um, those two internal candidates um, needed to be give, given preferential treatment. And I, I think that this is probably um, something that's at odds with the collective bargaining agreement. And I guess I'm really concerned um, about that and the implications for that as we move down this process. Um, Thank you, Becca. Thank you for being with us today. I Mark, is that your timer that is going off? It was, yes. Sorry. Yeah. It's, okay. It's off now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Becca, we don't have a lot of people. So if you want to finish those two last sentences, but just stick to your dialogue, please. Oh, okay. Um, so I was just saying that. Um, I'm concerned about the implications of this hiring process down the road um, if we do continue down the path that we are with um, the potential violation of the collective bargaining agreement. Thank you. Uh, Hannah? Hi there. Um, I'm also a parent at Rumney. I have two kiddos, one in kindergarten and one in first grade. Um, and I am echoing what both Nikki and Becca said. Um, I'm really concerned about uh, protocol and process. Um, this is reminding me a lot um, about our issues with former Superintendent Olkowski. Um, that was a big concern and, and lack of transparency was, was really toxic. Um, the same thing happened with, um, well, I won't say the same exact thing. A lot of the same concerns came up with the principal hiring search in terms of um, misleading information about how the search committee was going to work, how the recommendations were sent to whom and what weight they were applied. I felt like that was very misleading. And it seems to me that the same, a, a very similar thing has happened. Um, and Rumney is in a place where because of a lot of changes um, in a short amount of time, um, trust in administration is thin. Um, and I'm worried for our community. We are so lucky to have a really strong community of teachers and, and a core group that's been there for a long time. Two of these internal candidates are part of the glue are part of this community that is remarkable. And for them to be passed over is, um, is really shocking. And I think demands uh, greater clarity on how the process happened and also some oversight. One of the issues that we brought up before the principal hire was potential conflict of interest. Um, and I don't think that that, I, so I think that this process warrants a greater degree of oversight um, and transparency. And I'm very concerned um, 
about the road we're heading down, um, just like Becca said. So thank you. Thank I'd, you, ask, the, I'd thank ask the board too to consider that. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Kristen? Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Kristen Freeman. I'm a parent of a six year old who's in kindergarten at Rumney um, and cur currently and did two years in the pre K program. We've been thrilled with the experience at Rumney because of the teachers. And I feel really passionate about, um, I feel concerned actually. I feel passionate about our teachers. Those are our leaders. Um, they're on the forefront of helping to raise our children and educate. And I'm really concerned about um, what I'm sensing. Um, I would echo what Nikki, Becca and Hannah have all shared. I'm concerned about the hiring decision in front of the board and I'm advocating for more community involvement. I'm also advocating for a strong consideration of internal candidates. A school is its people. The teachers are the leaders. Talent needs to be supported and recognized for the good of our children, our community. It's just so important. So I would ask again for the board to consider taking more time and hearing more community input before making this really important decision. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Hey, Lauren? Yes, thank you. So my name is Lauren Frank, and I am also a Rumney parent. I have a preschooler and a current kindergartner there at Rumney. And um, echoing what everyone else has said before me and just wanted to go on the record and say for myself that I feel like you are losing the trust of your community by not considering beloved, well-qualified and dedicated internal candidates for what was the recently open primary FTE position at Rumney. I was shocked and saddened to learn that educators who have enriched the lives of both of my children were passed over for an external candidate. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you everybody for coming. I don't, is there any other public comments? I don't see, uh, Hannah, I imagine that's an old hand. Okay, so thank you everybody for, for coming. I, I know that it, we received some letters and so I'm just gonna acknowledge that it is hard for the community to know all the ins and outs. I was gonna just share with you that if the, the board creates policies that clarify expectations and procedures for the whole district, but the board does not get involved in the, the hiring practice. It, this allows us to maintain a clear relationship with staff and community and how do we do that is by continuing to stay in those chain of commands. There are some steps that uh, through policy that, that you guys can, uh, can take, but this is not a topic today on our, on our agenda. So I was just gonna suggest that I have no doubt that our administrators have taken all steps necessary to ensure for a fair and equitable professional treatment of all of the candidates. And the board hires a superintendent and the superintendent hires those administrators to be able to get the job done on behalf of the board. But this is not something that the board gets into. Um, so with, at, a, at a later time, uh, the board can take us the, the topic of what are our hiring practices at the moment, just like we were all today curious and talking about diversifying the educator workforce. So we would do that at a later topic and everybody would be invited, public is always invited to meetings. So with that, we're gonna move into the rest of our agenda. Are there any agenda revisions from board members? And thank you for coming. Any agenda revisions? Lauren? Chris? Uh, yes. hand yes. Um you know, the board does uh, ultimately hire uh, teaching candidates. And what we've, heard, what we've heard from um, multiple members of the Rumney community and the Middlesex community, as well as letters, is a grave concern about the process that was used. Uh, and um, we, can, we can have this discussion uh, during the hiring when we're at the end of the, at the meeting when we're considering the hiring. Because um, ultimately, it is the board's decision whether to hire uh, a teacher or not. And, and I will bring this up when we are later in the meeting just to have this discussion because it, um, I mean, we have to listen to our community members uh, when, when we have such an outpouring. And so just, I'm, I'm just alerting that I'm going to raise this 
later when we are considering the candidates for hire. Um, thank you. Okay, any agenda revisions? Seeing none, uh, let's move into students' reports while we are all here. Anna, thank you for taking the time to being with us today. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking time out of um, your day to help out with my school and to listen to my report. I have a long list of things. I'm just going to blurb through all of them. Um, I might talk a little bit more in detail of them. Um, the biggest thing, two of the biggest things are we just finished the AP exams for juniors and seniors who want to push all of their learning. They take AP courses, which will prepare us for college. Um, if I, I'm going to get my scores back for those in July, if I perform well on my AP tests, I will be able to get credit in college for those. So that's a really, really big deal. I'm really happy that they're done with, and I have a little bit of stress off my body now. Um, this coming Saturday is the junior and senior prom. So I'll be attending the U32 prom. I'm very excited about that. Our theme is Bohemian Night, which is kind of very hippie-esque. That was not good. Um, very hippie-esque, very like earthy. We're going to have some plants there. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, along with the prom, we're having a middle school dance, which is very exciting. We haven't had one of those in a while. So the middle schoolers, I think, are going to be in the cafeteria. They're going to have a little dance. There's going to be a fundraiser. So that'll be very exciting for the middle school. Um, spring sports are going on. Um, this is the best time of year for sports. It's been really, really nice out these past couple of weeks. Um, our track team has been performing amazing. We have a couple of people who have run, won the relay won the sprints, um, won long jump, all of that's very exciting. Uh, my Frisbee team, we won our game yesterday, 15 to four. So that's very exciting, very excited about that. Um, there are three weeks left of school for me as a senior in high school. This is really scary and very, very exciting. Um, and I'm really grateful to have been in such a good school community. Um, same with there being the end of school, I've committed to college as well. A lot of seniors are now committed to college or knowing their options. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it yet or not. I will be attending Wheaton College in Norman, Massachusetts with a major in education and a minor in women's studies. So yes, Stephen, uh, I'm very excited about it. Um, so that's going to be a really, really exciting thing for me. Um, I'm going to keep moving as fast as possible. The next thing is for seventh graders, they go into seventh grade and they create these really, really adorable books, the picture books of stories they create for themselves, and they will give them to first and second graders from all the elementary schools in the district. So that'll be happening very, very soon. And they're all handmade, hand colored. The covers are from splatter painting. And it's, it's a really, really cute experience for the elementary schools to be able to bond with the high school and the middle school as well. Um, same thing, sort of during that same day, we're doing step up day and unity day. So all of you guys who have middle school, high school, elementary school, going to middle school, it's a really big day for kids to be able to see what their next year is going to look like. Um, coming on June 1st, a bunch of the members of the school board might be aware we are going to be raising the pride flag at our school. And that's a really big deal because there's been a lot of controversy and there's some meetings going on with it, and hopefully by June 1st, that will be happening, and we'll have a lot of support with that. And the final thing, just to top it off on a good note, is the seniors have been raising money, and because COVID is hopefully going to play out well, we'll be going on a trip to New York State for, I believe, one night, and we'll be going whitewater rafting. So that'll be a good way to end our year. And I want to thank you all for having me as your student rep this year, and I really appreciate all of it. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for being so thoughtful and for all of that report and for, you know, being with us all this time. We wish you the best and we will have you here for another meeting though, right? So uh, any questions from board members? I don't see any hands up. Okay, so moving, moving right along, it, uh, I want to welcome our superintendent. We have the COVID update. Is Maria with us too or just you, Jen? Maria is here somewhere, I believe. Okay. So okay. I'll get us, yeah, I'll get us started. Um, so just a few things to report right now. First of all, as you may well be aware, the Vermont Department of Health now has the weekly surveillance report. I last looked at it at 10 o'clock this morning. At that point, um, it was updated on May 11th um, and statewide, the metric is high. Uh, and the, um, the, the surveillance report refers to both Vermont Department of Health guidance and CDC guidance. So I want to know that I want folks to know that that resource is there. Um, and in, in that same vein, just uh, 
a plea for our community to continue to report cases to Maria. We've asked people to let her know so that we can continue to, um, to monitor the activity in our schools and make decisions that are safe for our school communities. Um, and in that vein, the school nurses just received a new, um, a new document from the Vermont Department of Health. It was dated May 16th. And, um, and this was the follow-up I reported last month that we were expecting to get some more guidance from the Vermont Department of Health. That has come. And beginning next Monday, our school nurses, again, are expected to report, uh, report COVID-19 cases to the Department of Health, specifically any positive cases that were reported by parents or caregivers um, and any tests administered to the, um, by the school and um, reporting any clusters or suspected outbreaks. Um, whether or not you, you need to know if it's, you know, there's no contact tracing that our school nurses are being asked to do, but they are supposed to um, let the VDH know if they think there's a um, cluster of cases or a possible out, uh, outbreak. So we've been waiting for that guidance, how exactly it's going to play out to enact it, we don't know. So I think our most important thing is to please continue to let Maria know so that we can track that activity in our buildings. Um, that is it for the COVID-19 report, unless there are questions for Maria or myself. Diane. I'm just wondering with this current um, surge or whatever, are we seeing a um, continued difficulties or increased difficulties with staffing um, or you know, how is, what is that looking like? So we definitely have had staff impacted and we've had particular classrooms impacted as well, um, where we are pretty certain given the cases that there was um, something happening in school. Maria, do you want to elaborate on that in any way? That um, I think we are still seeing increased uh, absences in our school and both staff and students. Um, there, I don't know if we've talked about numbers, but we're up to about 640 cases in the district this year, which is a really significant number. Um, April was uh, very close to January and May is looking to be just about uh, the same as April. So we're, um, it's an interesting time. Uh, people are definitely fatigued and nobody wants to discuss it any longer, but COVID doesn't care <laughs> particularly much. Um, and we did have, we had a, a, a pre-K classroom that we were keeping an eye on at Rumney that seemed to have um, some higher than average numbers. But um, thankfully with the time in between the classes, it was a Monday, Tuesday class, we seem to have broken that transmission pattern, um, but we are, we're still keeping an eye on it. Thank you, Maria. I see Jonas has her, his hand up. Thank you, Floor. Uh, Jen and Maria, uh, with the demise of the COVID dashboard, which has now been replaced by the weekly surveillance report, which does not have county level data, are we still using the CDC metric uh, about the community uh, uh, risk level to set our masking policy, which has been set in conjunction with our, uh, with our labor unions? Uh, yeah, that's OU? That's exactly what we're using. So, um, and I've started, as you may well be aware, I, I wait to send the community letter until we have the update. And um, Maria very helpfully and dutifully texts me to let me know when it's updated so then I can make sure to get that out there. Um, and if necessary, we make sure that the signage on the buildings is updated as well. Thank you, Jenna. I have, I have one other quick question. Uh, with the state of Vermont announcing on Tuesday that they will be uh, phasing out the testing sites, um, I'm not sure what the timeline is for that. Um, but next year, as we go into the school year, um, do you think that, that the district will have enough uh, at-home testing kits and resources to make available to students in the absence of that state-sponsored testing? And if there is anything that the board can do to publicize that and make families and the community know that that capacity exists, please let us know. And if the board needs to provide additional resources to you to make that happen, I would be very interested in hearing that. 
Thanks, Jonas. At this point, we have ample tests for our community and um, and we just got a memo. Maria, you will be able to describe it a little better than I will right now, but about various tests and ordering them and getting them um, into, the, into our uh, central office to lock up and then distribute for next year. Maria, can you elaborate on that memo? Yep. So the, the AOE apparently um, due to their storage, transportation, whatever contracts that they have, um, they are opting to ship us next year's tests up to Christmas um, based on our school populations uh, before, I think it's in the first week of June. So we'll be storing those tests. Um, they've extended the expiration dates of the tests we currently have. So we, had a, a, we have a large amount, thousands of rapid at-home tests that are set to expire in July. They've extended that till the end of October. Um, so, and they are giving us LAMP tests, which are the quick result, 30 minute result PCR quality tests. Um, they're giving us 25% of our school population's number um, of those, of LAMP tests. And that's primarily for diagnostic use by nurses at school. Um, we have been passing out some LAMP tests to families who have multiple cases in, um, but we probably will be a little bit more circumspect with those and be passing out more rapids in the fall. But we, at this point, we look to be very well stocked for the fall. Thank you guys. Any other questions? Otherwise, Jen, you can move into our next sure. continuous improvement. Thank you. Um, uh, U32 schedule first. At the last meeting, um, actually as part of the COVID-19 report, I shared with you verbally some changes in next year's U32 schedule that really have been based on a lot of the learning and experience that we've had in the past few years through this pandemic. And uh, we started communicating with the uh, U32 community as well. So Stephen and I just put a lot of what I had put verbally in writing for you to kind of memorialize that um, in your packets. Essentially, I would say in a nutshell, the key points are um, more frequent meetings of shorter duration each week for our students. So there's more consistent contact time. Um, it's a schedule that allows for callback and teacher advisory every day, and the dismissal time will be five minutes earlier than, um, than this current year, um, which will also alleviate still some of the pressures we've had in, in busing for elementaries. Those are the highlights. Um, Stephen, anything else you want to um, point out? Otherwise, we, we're welcome to, uh, you're welcome to ask questions or make comments, and we'll, we'll do our best to address them. Any board questions or comments? Uh, no. I don't see any hands up. Uh, Jen, I, I just wanted to thank both of you for you know giving us that list of educational outcomes and what what you're doing. That was super helpful and just learning what you have learned too. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, next, continuous improvement plan, and I'm going to do this one just verbally for you. Uh, many of you attended the Ed Quality committee meeting in April. And at that meeting, I showed you sort of this graphic of all of the tests that were, or all of the tests, all of the plans that we're writing related to the agency of education, um, the ARP ESSER plan, continuous improvement plans um, are in that flow chart. And so we're moving toward the continuous improvement plans. You know that the annual snapshot has been released. So we're able to look at um, some of the statewide sources of data that previously had been embargoed, specifically the Smarter Balanced Assessment and the Vermont Science Assessment. So my plan right now is to, um, with the support of the leadership team primarily first and uh, Michelle Sepka, who is our data queen, um, to put those slides together and to put uh, work into safe and healthy schools and ac academic achievement goals in alignment with our moving forward slash recovery slash ARP ESSER plan to move all of that forward and to highlight some of the data. Next Wednesday is a half day of school for our students and our teachers and paras will be um, attending for a short period of time an overview of continuous improvement planning. 
where I will share that information, ask for some feedback on the draft goals, again, trying to create some coherence in the system. My plan right now is to record it, to put that recording out to the public as part of the community letter next week with a feedback form, and then also invite them to the forum that you all are having on June 1st, so that there's enough advance notice for people who wanna preview everything, and then we can still adhere to the timeline of June 15th for you all to, um, to approve the continuous improvement plan. So that's my thinking, um, some heavy lifting to do between now and, and next week, but I think it's feasible. Questions or comments about that? Thank you, Jen. I think Chris's hand was up. I don't know if from the previous or for this one. <laughs> Sorry, no, Chris, I saw your hand. No, no, she was speaking. Okay, I, I want to go flip back one if I can, Jen, and for Stephen. Sure. Um, when we uh, changed the schedule last year for additional reading time for um, students, has that borne any fruit, or is this just not a, a good year for asking that question? I would say that we don't have any hard data on that, but I do know that we've been able to utilize that silent sustained reading time so that the kids are able to, uh, to read both. Um, usually it's books of choice for them, um, and it's just uh, practice reading. I would say that um, we could look at our reading scores once we, uh, once we get a little more data and, and see if that was one of the helpful pieces of it, but I, I, I don't want to, to, to say that we have hard data on it, but they are doing it. <laughs> okay, practice, thank you very much, that's helpful. Yep, thanks. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Maggie? This is just the middle school sustained reading, yes? Uh, correct, but I do know that our ninth, um, I do know our ninth grade teams actually do some uh, reading time within their um, uh, English classes as well. It's not um, every day that they meet, but they do build that time in as well. Maggie? Any, anything else or that? Yeah, I and mean, I think it'll be helpful to hear as a parent of a ninth grader, um, I would be interested to find out if the data does bear that there are gains in reading fluency and comprehension from this opportunity. Um, you know, to the extent there's accountability for um, what they're actually reading. Is it actually being read is what I'm driving at. <clears throat> Understood. I'll get you that information, Maggie. Thank you. And then the final part of the report today is related to the Berlin um, land transfer update. So I'm going to do a couple key highlights and then I would invite Chris and Aaron to, to supplement what I'm going to say. I know that Chris O'Brien and Aaron Boynton met the other day with the Berlin Zoning Administrator um, to talk about the plans um, sort of more conceptually and also to um, hear a status update. And so essentially what's happening right now is that there have the permitting um, process is still in process. There's a regulatory 30-day uh, appeal process and we are in that process through, um, and the permit becomes effective May 29th, if there are no appeals right now. Um, and then for uh, Berlin, we'll set property pins and do some more work regarding the subdivision. Um, this is an area for me, I have to admit, is, um, is a steep learning curve. So <laughs> I would defer to Chris and Aaron to, um, to supplement anything that I said so that you have the information that you all need. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, we, we didn't get a, um, a whole lot more information than what he sent in this uh, communication um, in person, other than he did bring some drawings, some conceptual uh, drawings and some pictures of buildings and what they may look like. Um, he did talk about some timelines, uh, some shorter term, some longer term. Um, but what I would like to ask is going forward, um, 
what would the what would the board be looking for um, for information in in how how frequently we want to get updates uh, from Tom Badowski in in that team? Or members? Is there any? I... Chris, I don't I don't think that we have any requirements except that you know we. Oops, Chris. Go ahead, and then I'll tell you what. Okay, I would just um, like to ensure that we're getting what we bargained for in terms of maintaining trails and things like that, and you're not um, doing things inadvertently um, that are violating what we've what we've bargained for. Um, so having just periodic inspection, um, you know, maybe by someone from our side of the fence, uh, whether it be Aaron or you, Chris. Um, just so sure. you can, because it's easier to address those things earlier than later if if, right. if something goes awry. Thank you. Okay. Jonathan? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see updates uh, fairly regularly as well. Um, but I, I think really those updates should be generated by the town and provided to us. But I agree with Chris that we ought to have you know, our own, some of our own folks keeping an eye on what's going on there too, to be quite honest. As someone, as you all know, I didn't support this at all anyway. So I think we ought to keep a close eye on it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan and Chris. So what I was gonna say, Chris, is just making sure that we stay within the memorandum of understanding and that the memorandum of understanding goes into the deed, right? So we, we're still in that influx place right now. They haven't finished all their work. They're still getting, so yeah, just, and you can also let us know when you have enough information and bring it to us. And then we can create a system yearly just to make sure that we are uh, monitoring. I don't want to add, I want to be careful to not add more work for both Aaron and you. That is because uh, I know how crazy you guys are right now, but that it's meaningful also for the board. So okay. uh, Aaron. Oh, Maggie. Is here. Go ahead, Aaron. Um, did you have a comment? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I just wanted to add a couple things. Um, yeah. I mean, definitely Chris and I will take the time to make sure that we're keeping an, an eye on things. I mean, that's a, promise on my part and a guarantee. Um, I wanted to mention too, just because um, I've had some, you know, some staff wonder around, you know, what, what enrollment could look like and what would that mean if, you know, we're talking housing and there's a boost of uh, student enrollment. Um, and Tom was able to provide a little bit of information. And I think just wanted to take this moment now just to plant this seed. Uh, he mentioned that it could potentially next not this fall, but next fall um, with the um, uh, plans as they are for the uh, residential building or buildings that could be done by then, um, an increase of, of 10 students. <laughs> That's pretty easy for us to manage and definitely welcomed. I asked about, you know, when all is said and done, which, which could be up to 10 years before this is all said and done, um, we could be looking at, in their estimation, uh, an, an, an increase of, of 80 students total when all is said and done. Um, doing a little bit of quick math with that, we would be needing to increase our, our regular classroom size. Um, we currently have 10 classroom teachers. Um, I would, we would be looking at more like needing 14 rooms um, in addition instead of like 10. So that just gives you a little bit of a sense of what the future might hold for, you know, having to add on space. Uh, we would definitely need to add on something. <laughs> um, um, and that could be the estimate of, of how much, you know, three to four or five additional actual physical brick and mortar rooms. So just wanted to report on that. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. That's helpful. Any other questions for Chris or Aaron? Otherwise, I'm going to move us into board operations. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Jen. Okay. 
moving right along, a board retreat is the first part of it. I think you guys all got an invitation. I know I'm sorry that we couldn't make it work for everybody. We were trying our best. August 8th is the date in case something changes for any of, of you guys, 4 to 8 p.m. Food will be included. So far, we have Pietro and uh, Pietro Lin, uh, one of our councils joining us, and he's going to do a brief presentation that he's shared before uh, at different webinars on uh, open meeting law and best practices. It's, it's a very short presentation, so it doesn't take all our time. And then we're going to have a uh, Phil Gore uh, working on a, uh, on, on a retreat for us. So I was, I, I was going to have the steering committee that creates the agenda be, be part of that brainstorming for our uh, August 8th uh, retreat. So I'm looking for either thumbs up from board members if that feels like a good idea. And that's where that's where we are. And of course, it, we would be work welcoming our new superintendent in uh, in July 1st, and she would be part of this uh, of this board retreat. Yes, I see all thumbs up. Okay. That was easy. Staff, in staff appreciation, we have Diane with us. I don't know if you had something to share, Diane. I have a little piece to share. Yeah, I think so. Before you do that, Flora, I apologize yeah. for having left um, last time. Um, McKaylin, did you talk about that potential email idea? No, I, I haven't talked about that yet. Um, I suggested that. Um, our, the organization I work for has an email address, like a gratitude, um, it would be like gratitude at u32.org or whatever. And um, so as things arose in the moment, people could send an email to that. And then I don't know who would supervise it, but that could be a way to then share those gratitudes or some of those gratitudes with the wider community. Um, I just know that in my busy day, I often have these like little thoughts of gratitude and then they they disappear. So it's kind of nice to have a place to quickly shoot them to someone. <laughs> so that McKaylin had shared that idea when we had been talking about potentially doing a rotation of appreciative um, emails. And so I would say we just wanted to plant that seed as well. I know there was a collaborative um, gift that was done from the board and also from um, central office or the, the bigger population. And so uh, this is a time where we are very mindful of our appreciation for the hard work that, and, and you know, the light at the end of the tunnel's coming up and I don't think it's a train. So we just have to keep chugging. And so thank you all. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Mika. Great idea. I, I have I had a little piece to propose to to the board and had and ask for our superintendent first I wanted to you know we we just thankful and happy we had that last day of school conversation and and that was really positive for all of us we have an, an outcome for that so that inspired me to also think about our year-round school staff and our custodial staff our business administrator you know our administrative assistants and the and our administrators, right, that are around staff. So I was wanting the board to potentially agree to ask Jen to come over with a recommendation of how to honor them too and, and have some equity around around this. So, you know, and, and she's free to come to us, you know, at, at least the in June teeth for them too. And then something something else. If the board is in agreement with that, I would like to uh, ask the staff appreciation, have that for them yeah, too. Is that okay with board members? Just thumbs up. All right. Okay. Is, is that okay, Jen? Is that descriptive enough? And you can come to us at our next meeting. It's going to be our community engagement meeting, but I think that would be. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm do it. very happy. To, I'm happy to do that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And again, just thank our, all our staff and thank uh, especially today our custodial staff that, you know, has been really uh, working a lot through all this pandemic uh, too. So, and, and sometimes I feel like they feel a little bit underappreciated from all of us and we are not, <laughs> you know, we, we think of you often too, right? So moving on, and of course our administrators, but you know, I, 
Nobody's being left out. There's five for everybody. Uh, let's move. Uh, oh, sorry, that's me again. So a reflection on uh, on the presentation that we were, we, we figured because we were gonna be in the presentation, let's do it right now. Just do a quick, what came up uh, for you so we can put it in our, in our in our minutes and then we can have a more uh, robust conversation maybe either a retreat or at some other time when we are collaborating with the administrators too so i'm gonna just open it vaguely if you had any reflection from what the, the board members that were able to attend today and not everybody needs to speak if you don't feel comfortable but just any reflections from what you heard today and we'll start with maggie I appreciate the invitation and um, I thought it was really helpful to participate and have a space to be um, considering uh, our approaches and our perspectives. Thank you, Maggie. Kari? I thought it was really well done. I thought that was a great presentation and the focus on small group discussions is really important for those topics, I think. Um, we could have used a little bit more time, but I thought it was a great use of time. And um, um, I'd be interested in doing more things like that if they were that well done. That's great. Thank you, Kari. Uh, Diane? Yeah, I, I agree, Kari. It's really, we've had it. Um, as part of our thinking that we needed to have more opportunities for conversation and for, um, you know, educating ourselves around what our own biases are and that work. And so I really appreciated the opportunity to be thinking about recruiting. Um, I mean, not recruiting, but retaining. Uh, we sometimes, I think, land on recruiting, but I also wonder if that's the easy way out because um, we can always say, oh, it's just a problem to recruit. But the reality is we're not dealing with our environments and whether or not we're uh, retaining strong staff because of the way we treat people. And, um, and so I, I appreciated the, the opportunities to get a little bit of information, try to synthesize that and then move on. And I agree more time would be great. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Chris? Sorry about that. Uh, what, what struck me is that it seems that um, to really tackle this issue and address it concretely and effectively, we have to have strong systems in place, particularly around communication, um, so that uh, there's not um, like unilateral decision making, but everyone gets um, the opportunity to speak and, um, and just how individuals have very different views of the same activity and how to just open that up so everyone has better understanding. It's, it's a very difficult topic, I will say, and would take a lot of work for us um, across the board. And for Diane, uh, you know, I agree with her that retaining, it sounds like it's a really crucial part, but we have to recruit in order to retain too. So I think that's really an, an important first step as well. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Ursula? I, I really appreciated being able to be at the presentation. I agree with Kari and Diane, more time, but maybe more frequent discussions on the subject would be beneficial because I look forward to this as a start of us doing work to address the systems that we have and our internal bias and our systematic bias so that we can make changes to those systems so we can retain and therefore recruit. Thank you, Ursula. Any other board members? I don't see other hands. I thank you everybody for sharing. I, I guess I just wanna close with that one thing that we talked about that our responsibility as people with greater power eh, to, to to help right and to advance the work so and i think from what i see everybody's committed so it's super exciting let's move into oh best practices for board communication and open meeting law i'm not going to take too much time and i don't have a 
speech, so don't worry. I just want to remind you guys of your book. Uh, and if you, if by any chance you have it near uh, near you, uh, it, Robert Rules is on page 76. And then there's also a little um, a guy, a guideline chart as part of the book that is a, just a quick review. I'm not planning, we have a really packed agenda today and I'm not planning to go over. I send a little email about, you know, how to, to just be, be careful also with the uh, open meeting law that when we have comments, please do not copy everybody. We wanna have the conversations at the board level uh, in the board meeting uh, with the public watching us. We don't wanna have the conversations in email because then we are, we can, put the district at harm. So to always be very mindful of that, please do not express your opinions in email uh, when you receive communications. And then the uh, and then the other page that I wanted to highlight is page 78. Uh, there's some really uh, easy tips of how to handle public complaints during board meetings and you know just the practices that we're trying to get into it. I know that it's, it's not easy, but we don't wanna get caught, especially in public, in open meeting law that, you know, that's one thing that we don't want to place our district at harm, right? So just a quick reminder of that. Uh, that was it. And you guys all got that email. So how's everybody doing? I know that for some of you, we've been sitting for two hours already. So I was going to suggest that before we jump into the finance part to take five minutes, if everybody's okay with that, to be able to get a cup of water, just use the bathroom and then come right right back and then we'll welcome Suzanne and others to join us. Is that okay? All right, so five minutes is 1850, I mean 652. I'll see you back, at, if I can do the math, at 658, right? Or 57, <laughs> yeah, around there. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Let's move right to finance. Yeah. Welcome, Suzanne. Let me just get to my page here. Yeah. We have the monthly reflection and yeah, and the possible changes in barricader needs. Does the board have a chance to to look at them? Are there any specific questions? You can raise your hand. Okay, I don't see any hands up. I'm not trying to rush us through this. So if there's any, okay. So I'm gonna look at, to my finance committee here to see if I could have a motion for 5.21 to authorize the superintendent to sign the contracts for Washington Central Unified Union School District. Oh, Maggie, you have your hand up. Is that for the first part, the informational part? Yes, it's it's actually a comment. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to say as um, uh, you know, having the opportunity to participate in the first year journey um, trainings last week in particular that I felt so well informed by what our business team provides us that what we were being told in that meeting last week was um, very much kind of a review for me and just reinforced what a how fortunate we are to have such a great team. So um, it's really just a thank you for um, the, the professionalism and accessibility that you bring to sharing this information with us as a board. Thank you, Maggie, that is well said. Thank you, Susan, Jen, and your entire team, that's great. Okay, yeah. I don't see any other hands up, so. I'm looking into either my finance or any of the board members. Oh, Ursula, I see your hand went up a little Motion, bit. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. Um, this is on the authorizing the superintendent to sign contracts. Yeah, on district. page eight. Yep. Yep. I move that the board authorizes the superintendent to sign all contracts on behalf of Washington Central Unified Union School District. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second, please? Second. Second. All right, you got I'm it. gonna give it to Jonas. So moved by Ursula, second by Jonas. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And 
Thank you, Eric. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and now moving to page nine, could I have a motion for the blanket authorization for board warrants and check orders? I can do it again. Thank you. Ursula. I move the board authorize the blanket authorization for board warrants included in the packet effective through fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Thank you, Ursula. Can yeah, I have a second? Minute. Thank you, Lindy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll get you do the next one, Dennis. All right. Yeah. Any any questions on on this one? Any discussion for board members that were not at Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. And then moving right along, 5.23, authorized superintendent to award bids. Could I have a motion? I'll motion, take a, make a motion that allows the superintendent to approve bids, to award bids. Thank you, Dennis. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion, any questions? I'm just looking at new board members especially, but there's never a wrong question, but seeing none, all those in favor of uh, the motion as read by Dennis and second by Ursula, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right. Any opposed? Hearing none, and I see your chats, uh, Natasha. Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. All right. And then the last one in in this in this part, eh, I'm looking for a motion to award a bid for the network. Okay, I'll the do last that one. one. But yeah, okay, okay, go ahead. Lindy. I make a motion that the board approve awarding the bid for network switches to Ormsby's computers and authorize the use of up to one hundred three thousand two hundred thirty two dollars of funds reserved for technology hardware for the purchase of network switches. Thank you, Lindy. Okay, looking for a second. Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any questions on this one? It was quite a description there. And Mark is with us if there's any questions. I, see none. I have a quick question, oh, oh, sorry. John. Okay, go ahead, Daniel, and then Jonas. I was just curious if uh, this raised a question for me, whether, um, IT hardware, and I guess for that matter, software is being considered capital assets um, for the purposes of our five-year capital plan. To send in, uh, I let you, I think I know the answer, but I'd rather have you. Uh, well, it's a capital asset, Super. and did you account for it as a fixed asset on our capital assets um, for reporting through our audit? Uh, it is not included in the capital improvement project five-year plan that the board is uh, reviewing tonight. That is specifically for building and ground projects. Um, and it is uh, a hope of mine personally that we discuss this budget season, a separate uh, equipment fund to uh, um, a lot towards uh, larger purchases. So uh, fixed assets for equipment that would include IT or may be separately considered. Um, but no, right now that's not in the plan. It's accounted for as a fixed asset though. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, Jonas? Yeah, my, Suzanne, my question was going to be along the lines of what you just said. Um, you know, does, does Chris and his team have a similar you know, multi-year forecast for, um, uh, sorry, does Mark have a similar plan? Mark and his team have a similar plan to Chris's, right? With multi-year forecast of what we'll need and maintenance and eventual replacement of everything from, you know, the Chromebooks to, you know, network switches. Yeah, he actually has a really good one. And sorry, Mark, uh, if you want to talk oh, to this, but he has a really good uh, plan. Um, I will say, the current plan requires the general fund budget to see blips up and down. 
So it's not a nice, we're putting this much money in every single year into a savings account. And that's something that we should consider correcting um, so that we're planning better. So that we have an IT fund. Thank you, Jonas. And thank you, Suzanne and Mark. Any other questions? Seeing none, I think the board is ready for the question. So all those in favor of the motion as read by Lindy and second by Ursula, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I see your yes, Natasha. Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank right. you all. Thank so, you, Suzanne. Thank you. Okay, moving right along now into the approved purchase for new windows at U32. That was on page 14. Um, I move that the board award the bid for replacement of windows at U32 to Portland Glass for an amount not to exceed $24,015. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Jonas. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of... Oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Just and this is more of a process question. Um, mm -hmm. Do we no longer have to have bids on um, items that exceed fifteen thousand dollars? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. So by, is that by, by statute or just by our capital plan? Um, the statute, the feds, the state—it's all risen to forty thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. I just, mm -hmm. uh, that was news to me, but thank you very much for that yep. information. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions? That's an old hand, I'm assuming, Chris. Right. It is an old hand, yeah. All right. If seeing no other questions, all those, all those in favor uh, of the motion as read, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Uh, moving right along, it now is to approve the tractor and UT lease for a, you, the, the tractor purchase <laughs> on page, uh, page 15. Could I have a motion? Eric, are you with us? You should make this motion. I'm just kidding. Because uh, uh, you helped us with this. Where is he? I don't know. Okay, Ursula, you're ready. I'll do it. Thank you. I move that the board authorize the superintendent to purchase a John Deere tractor and UTV from United Ag and Turf for an amount not to exceed $68,999 after allowance for the trade-in of the tractor, UTV, and attachments. Second. I will second That's it. it. <laughs> there you are <laughs> in the sunny spot. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, Ursula. All right. Any discussion? Any questions? Mm -hmm. The, yeah, Jen, do you want to do a clarification for? Yeah, I did, I did want to say when we were reviewing the packet today, we noticed a typo that might have been confusing. So I just want to point that out. Originally, we had been thinking about um, recommending for a lease. The Finance Committee had a really robust discussion with some good questions. And so we um, did a little more research and then we're recommending uh, the board action to purchase. You'll notice a little typo in that first paragraph of your summary. That was from the old memo. So just the using a lease, that's not what we're thinking about. I also know there was a question about maintenance that came up and, um, and Chris and Suzanne and I talked about that today. Um, and in general, we complete the routine maintenance in-house. If it's something that's not routine, we might have to send out. But um, I just wanted to clarify that for you all. Thank you, Jen. So I have a, a question. Um, okay, go ahead, Chris. Jen, do we have a sense as what the trade-in value is for the tractor that we're trading in? I'm going to defer to Chris on that question. <laughs> we do. We have uh, numbers for both of those, but unfortunately, I don't have those in front of me at the moment, Chris. Okay, and I was just asking just to get a sense as to what the new tractor cost is in reality, because I'm assuming the value of the trade-in lowers the purchase price that we're looking at right now. Yeah, I, I, I've got all that information. Sorry, it's, it's, it's back in the right. office. 
I can get I that have to it. You. I have I'm it. Yeah. Um, just pulling it up. Um, they are giving us a trade-in allowance for the tractor and attachments of 19.5. So the original purchase price was 61.953, which is still lower than the Kubota. Um, and the trade-in allowance is more than what Kubota uh, was being was offering us. Uh, UTV thirty-five thousand forty-five dollars is the purchase price, and the trade-in allowance is eighty-five hundred. Um, that purchase price is more than a Kubota UTV, but the trade-in allowance is also thirty-five hundred dollars more. So the net on that one uh, comes out to about two thousand dollars more than the Kubota UTV, but the difference on the tractor is about six thousand dollars less. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Eric, your hand is up. You have a question yeah, for this. I think yeah. yeah, first I want to um, thank you all for getting the cost on purchasing it outright as opposed to the lease. Um, I do appreciate that research being done. Um, my question with purchasing it from United Ag and Turf, um, is that including any of their, their maintenance uh, plans that they have with them? Um, I know they used to have them, but at least for covering the five years that you're hoping to get out of it, um, does that include any of that cost or was, were you guys considering anything like that? Eric, no, what, what we got back from Anthony was that they don't do that anymore because they were losing money. And, and what he offered was to add another year to the, um, to, to the um, warranty. Uh, it was a couple thousand dollars to take it from 60 months to 72 months. But as far as maintenance um, plans, um, he said they were not doing those anymore. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And, and Eric, you, you asked for model numbers at the finance committee or at the last meeting. Um, it's a, it's a 50, 52 R on the tractor in case you were still looking for that. All right. That's a good tractor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, Chris. And yeah, so is the board ready for the question? So let's authorize the purchase of the tractor as moved by Ursula and second by Eric. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. All right. So it's a long finance today. So on page 16, we have the capital improvement plan. and the timeline, I, I'm gonna open it up for it, Suzanne and, and Chris to, you know, first the, just to give a little brief uh, update and then if there are any questions from the board. Sure, um, in response to both the board meeting and the community forum where we discussed the plan, uh, we walked away with uh, three things that we wanted to adjust in the plan. Um, the first one is changed on page 24 of the packet, uh, and it is about uh, stating in the plan that we will fully fund the five-year capital budget. The second adjustment to the plan is on page 21 of the packet, and it is in regards to a possible need to clarify the request process for projects in the stakeholder roles. And then on page 25 of the packet, uh, additional emphasis on energy efficiency, even when a project request is uh, in priority one. And so we've made those adjustments to the plan. Um, we hope to have the board adopt the plan officially June 1st. We wanted to give, um, or the finance committee discussed this and decided we wanted to give the community more time to provide feedback and it's currently on the website. Uh, and so is the feedback form. Um, and the, the, what we'd really like to talk about tonight is the proposed use of ARP ESSER in version two. So the grant funds uh, through uh, ESSER spending that 
If you look at pages 32 through 36 in the packet, that is the version two of the budget. And on page 36, uh, we note that $339,900 of estimated ARP ESSER funds can be used uh, to offset those projects, which are uh, ERUs or ERVs, um, some HVAC stuff at different schools. Um, and this version essentially swaps the boiler work for the HVAC work in FY24. And the reason for that is really capacity uh, and being able to do all of those uh, projects in FY24 really isn't feasible for Chris or Bill or David or even the buildings to have all of that happening at once. So um, we've swapped the two. Uh, we don't think that that's going to put anything at a huge detriment. Uh, the boilers are replacements due to um, it's time to play, to replace them. Uh, but I think one year, uh, we agree, right, Chris, on that, that one year isn't going to uh, put us at any more risk than the doing them in FY24. Oh, so that's what we were really hoping the board could uh, advise on tonight. And we'd like to seek board approval uh, for the projects so that we can instruct uh, engineers to develop a scope and budget and begin the planning for the FY24 projects. Chris, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I think you covered everything there, Suzanne. Thank you. Questions from board members? Diane. So I completely understand swapping out those tasks. Is there any, do we still have some ability that should something go wrong because of, you know, Murphy's law, now that you've swapped them out, one of the boilers will need work, but um, is there, do we still have a cushion enough to do an emergency coverage in case something happens? In the budget, the capital, the five-year capital budget, uh, right now there isn't a cushion. My hope is that uh, you all will discuss a transfer from your general fund budget to offset it. But I wanted to discuss ARP ESSER funding first because that affects how much we need to use from the general fund uh, fund balance. Um, so if something broke, we probably would come to you and say hey, the boiler broke, can we use uh, general fund fund balance to fix it? Uh, I will also say, and I was kind of hesitant to say it, but uh, Chris and Bill and several folks are working or discussing right now uh, potential upgrades to the boilers that might improve energy efficiency. And we might also be able to use other grant funds for if we complete the work this year. Uh, so it's a matter of timing and figuring that out, whether it can be done in FY23, which is really fall of 2022. Um, Chris, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we're, we're actually meeting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, um, starting at U32, uh, to look at that wood chip boiler. And, um, you know, they're looking at... The shape of the boilers are, uh, you know, U32 has been very well taken care of, and it's not as old as the other two. Um, Callus is, is, you know, one of the oldest ones in the state. Um, East Montpelier's is pretty old as well, but, you know, the shape of the boilers, um, if, if, we can, if we can extend the life um, with, with some, you know, with a lot of grant money um, without having to make that um, replacement cost, which, um, you know, for the smaller schools is probably going to be around $250,000 for each one. You know, if we could extend the life 10 or 15 years, would it make sense to, you know, spend, um, some money versus, um, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. So what we're looking at tomorrow is, uh, controls for, for the wood chip boilers, which could make them much more energy efficient. Um, also some cyclones, which would capture particulates uh, so they're not going out into the environment and uh, th things like that just to, you know, make them more energy efficient and cleaner. Um, so that discussion is happening tomorrow at all three schools. So it should have, 
uh, much more information this week on that for an update. And, and um, Diane, to answer your question, if, if we did have a failure, um, all three of those schools have um, oil system backups. So we wouldn't be, you know, we'd be spending more money on oil, obviously, but um, for fuel, uh, but, but we'd still be able to operate. Thank you, Chris. Uh, um, Chris McVeigh, you have a question? And I do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, so Chris, the work that is is being explored for tomorrow with the wood with the boilers, um, is that are those boilers uh, are those the boilers that are involved in the 2024 um, boiler project or or not? Yes, those are the okay. wood chip boiler. Uh, the the two of them are the U32s is not um, scheduled for replacement. That one's in really good shape. Um, that one they're telling us will last another, you know, 20 to 25 years. So if it's maintained the way it has been, uh, it's more about these Montpelier and Callis's um, wood chip boilers that are, um, you know, probably don't have as, as long of a lifespan at this point. So if the work, if, if it makes sense based on the evaluations that you, the discussions that you have tomorrow, uh, would those boilers then be, we go forward and extend their life and then they would not be part of the 2024 project? Yeah, that's, that's what we're exploring. Does it make sense to invest um, some money into them to get better efficiency and longer life? Or is it better just to replace them? So we're pulling in Messers, folks from Messersmith um, who manufacture wood chip boilers to give us some insight on um, on their thoughts. Uh, we had Jeff Forward, who was our energy consultant, look. We did the same walkthrough with him uh, a month and a half ago, and he gave some feedback, um, thinking that we could extend the life without replacing at least at East Montpelier in U32. Um, maybe a little harder to do at Callus, but we're gonna we're gonna look at that tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Any, any other questions on this? Um, I can't wait to get an update on that conversation tomorrow, Chris. I'm super excited about being able to do this work. Uh, so Suzanne, you're looking for, uh, do you, are you looking for a motion from us to approve to the use of SR funds? Would that be? Okay. Or, or? Can I ask Suzanne one more one question? Sure. Um, you noted Suzanne that there's a, um, a feedback form on the website. Yes. For the yeah, has, has has there been any feedback that has been received yet? I'm gonna let Jen answer. <laughs> okay. I I'm just wondering, just because that's I think that's a nice idea, and I hope people are using yeah. it. Yeah. I'm but gonna need you. to. I'll double check on that, Chris. I don't have the answer right this second, but I can take a peek. Okay. And, and we posted it, or I posted it on behalf of the board on Front Porch Forum, yeah, the form yeah, and, the, and the plan and the link to the plan. So the, as you open our website, it's like right uh, center, the form and the feedback form, but we could repost also as a board when we do our little uh, you know, briefing of what happened today at our board meeting, just remind people to put input before uh, we, we were hoping by the 23rd is the date that we put in. And I did ahead, just Jen. double check. Yeah, there are no responses yet from that feedback form, Chris. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Jen, and thanks, Chris. Okay, so back to the ESSER funds. Uh, Suzanne, my question there. Yeah, um, what we are looking for, and each slot. Uh, is on page 36, um, the total funding for FY24 uh, spending for capital improvement projects uh, approved by the board. Uh, sorry, trying to get to that page. At $2,288,194. Thank you. 
and the projects to be completed would include oh, which, which page are you in uh, Suzanne is um, the dollar amount is on page 36 okay it's the total line under FY24 so it's two million two hundred eighty-eight thousand one hundred ninety-four dollars is the dollar amount. Uh, the projects are on page thirty-two, I believe. Oh. Sorry, thirty-four. <laughs> Uh, the projects are on page 34 and they include paving the parking lot and sidewalks, uh, another 300,000 for the security card and camera system project, uh, HVAC uh, VFD drive replacement at U32, HVAC AHU damper replacement at Doty, mechanical controller replacement at U32, Boiler circulator pump replace number one at U32. HVAC energy recovery unit 20 year upgrade U32. Um, and then some money allotted for the clerk of the works to allocate to each of those projects. So the bulk of the funding that we're looking for does go to the parking lot, paving the parking lot and the sidewalks. And this, okay. this amount may uh, change once the scope and budgets are completed. Um, so we'll possibly be coming back for a different dollar amount. It's just really what we're interested in getting approved tonight are the, the projects um, anticipating the need to develop the scope and budget and get bids going in the fall. So uh, could I have one of our board members make a motion to approve the projects uh, for year 2023, 2024, right, uh, Suzanne? Yeah, in version yeah. two. In, in, in version two, not in version one. Correct. Is it clear? Okay, Daniel, Daniel go ahead. Uh, I move that the board, um, direct the finance, financial team uh, to develop a scope of work and budget, um, roughly totaling $2,288,194 um, for capital projects in FY 23 and 24, 23 to 24, and encompassing paving the parking lot and sidewalks, a new security card and camera system, the replacement of an HVAC VFD drive, the replacement of an HVAC AHU damper, the replacement of mechanical controller, the replacement of the boiler circulator pump number one at U32, the 20 year upgrade of the HVAC energy recovery unit, unit at U32 and funds allocated to designated clerk of the works for said projects. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Could I have a second? Okay, thank you, Ursula. All those in favor, since we haven't been discussing unless there's questions, <laughs> all those in favor, please say uh, wait, aye. Do you have, have a question? Oh, is, oh, you have a question. Is, okay, go yeah, ahead, Su Chris. Suzanne? Is the way the motion is phrased, is it too limiting uh, in terms of, of if any changes come up? I don't think so. I think we'll be back um, with firmer numbers when the budget's completed. Okay, thank you. If that's all right with the board. Um, Whether it is or not, you come back. The projects are really what we need approved right, right now. And so we'll just come back if the, the dollar amount's different. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you because we just listed the projects. We didn't even set the, the chart. So that's perfect. Right. All right. Uh, so uh, any other questions? Otherwise, all those in favor of approving the motion is read by Daniel and second by Ursula. Please signify by saying aye. 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 
Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Uh, hearing on the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. That was a lot of work. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Chris. And please thank Bill Ford Thanks, and folks. good luck to tomorrow with Barry. Sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. Yeah. A policy committee. I know that I didn't go in order on those finance, last finance, but we did cover them all uh, through the descriptions of, of uh, Suzanne. So unless there's a question for the board, I'm gonna move right to policy because we just have one policy. So Chris. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we only have um, policy C7 up for student attendance and this is for adoption. So we've, we've read through it before. And so I offer it, um, move that the board adopt um, policy C7 on student attendance. I'll second. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dennis. Any question, any, not, any discussion? All right, uh, Jen and then uh, Jonas. Just want to note that we missed uh, Ursula's correction for that typo. So I talked to Melissa about it. So truant should be in quotation marks and it did not make it into this packet. We'll make sure we get it for the official. Okay, so it needs an, a second set of quote. Okay, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Ursula. Uh, Jonas? No, you're all set. Okay. That was, that was it. All right. Okay. So all those in favor of approving the motion with the small amendment <laughs> that's going to happen from uh, the small typo. Uh, moved, by, moved by Chris, second by Dennis. Please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, we're moving right along. Okay, Curry, I'm gonna take let you take over the Education Quality Committee discussion and the pledge parameters that we discussed. Thank you. Great, so this, um, we're on page 39 and uh, hopefully you get a chance to look at the memo and it summarizes the key points. I just wanted to add that, uh, so the committee is recommending that we adopt this parameter basically to give the leadership team a head start with planning, because this is something that needs time. And this is a new practice for the board, right? We've never set a parameter, at least during my time, um, this early in the year before. Um, I, I kind of wish we had thought to use this tool sooner. And I give credit to Scott, Scott Thompson, who was pushing at the end of his tenure, to, how can we use the budget to drive for more education quality improvement and then also, um, Jen has been repeatedly, repeatedly saying, we need to move towards year-round budgeting. And I think this is a step towards that. And, and then last, um, ultimately, I think that we need a strategic plan um, and that this will be better addressed, these kinds of longer range thinking items. But for now, I think this is a good step for us um, and will hopefully provide some good direction um, for the leadership team when they start the budgeting. Any questions or anything to add to that? I don't see any questions from, from board members. Okay. So I'm would it be appropriate for me to make a motion then? Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Hold well, on, I have to find that part of my the packet. Maybe, could someone else make the motion, please? Um, I'll move that we uh, include an initiative to achieve significant improvement in math and or literacy proficiency for students in an individualized educational program and or who receive free and reduced price school meals the board wants the leadership team to identify an appropriate scope for the initiative given current circumstances and consider what resources will be needed for success. Thank you, Chris. Uh, could I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Ursula. 
hearing that we didn't have any questions before, all those in favor of approving the motion as read by Chris and second by Ursula, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Great, guys. Going back and forth in my packet here. So let's move into the consent agenda. And we have three sets of minutes to approve that hopefully you guys have a chance to read. Can I have a motion? Floor, I will, yeah. I will move to uh, accept the minutes of April 27th, May 4th, and May 12th, 2022. Thank you, Jonas. Could I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Dennis. Any discussion? Uh, yeah. for, uh, oh, go ahead, Eric. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I was just going to make the correction of my last name is S E N. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Jen? Yeah, on the um, bottom of the minutes on page 41, 4.2.1, I think a, a little wording change will make this one point a little clearer. The last line says, currently there is an AB block schedule. This allows 60 minute classes meeting three times a week. I think it should say the new schedule will allow for 60 minute classes three times a week. Um, so that clarification I think will be welcome. Thank you, Jen. Ms. Hatt, you got that? Yeah, thank you guys, I got it. All right. And that was me who made that. It was me who needed that clarification, not Lisa. So no shade but on Lisa it, there. Yeah. <laughs> also, Eric, I'm sorry I misspelled your name. I'll get it right. It takes me a while. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'll take the opportunity to thank Lisa. It's like every time I read the minutes, I'm like, oh, my God, how did you get all of that? And it's just like, thank you. We are grateful for what you do for us. So thank you. Um, all those in favor of approving the three sets of minutes as Jonas move please uh, signify by saying aye sorry aye aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed who seconded that sorry who, who seconded it uh, hold, hold, hold on one minute I think Dennis I have it right Dennis, Dennis. yeah oh, Jonas and second by Dennis yeah, yeah. thanks thank you okay. and now Lindy approval orders or do I have another volunteer that is ready? Um, I've got them up here. I just can't find my cursor. Uh, <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the board orders of 518.22 in the amount of $462,038.50. Thank you, Lindy. Could I have a second, please? Second. Second. Okay. Yeah. Gonna give it to Jonas or so I just because Jonas. Second. Lindy moved. Any discussion, any questions on the board orders? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the board orders, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Right, uh, let's move into personnel 9.1, approve new teachers. Could I have a volunteer? Lindy, do you wanna, or you're usually my person that is prepared with I that have them open. App. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I wanna make sure I have the right one open. It's the yeah, one that says May 18, 2022. Yes. Okay. Um, so, the new teacher nominations, should I do as a slate, like we've done? Yeah. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna ask that we be doing individually just because of the concerns that we've heard from community members so we can have a discussion. Um, and, and I think the, it, it behooves us to uh, respond to the comments that we've heard tonight uh, and have received through various letters about concerns about the process of the, um, uh, hiring a committee for the new Romney teacher. And uh, we 
as a board um, want to engage our community members um, and hope that they participate in our um, in our proceedings. Uh, and the it, there's a, it sounds like there's a significant concern not only by the community members by staff members uh, that the process was um, not a well done process and. Even though the, the board does delegate a significant amount of authority to our administrators, uh, we are also responsible to our community members uh, to respond to their concerns and to ensure that a, um, a fair process was used. Uh, and we don't know that unless we investigate it. Uh, and you know, this, this, the, the concerns that we have heard raised are, are, not, in, um, are not small ones. There, you know, in this in our community schools, there are, um, you know, it's it's a community, uh, it's a community separate and apart from um, all the other community schools. And even though we are one district now, um, the one of the downfalls of being one district is that the board loses touch with the local school. Uh, and it used to be that we we would have pretty much direct contact. Uh, with the um, search uh, search process uh, for new school um, staff members, including teachers, and you know the structure that we have now really takes us away from that. And so I think we need to really consider and listen hard to community members who are expressing concerns uh, and not invalid concerns, and and listen to them. So I would like to have a discussion about this and see. Uh, we're not powered, the board is not powerless in this situation. Um, and the decision to hire a teacher is a very um, significant one, as is the decision to hire a principal. So we really want to hear from the community, have their input, and ensure that a fair process was um, undertaken. And, you know, this, so I would like to go one by one in this regard. And I would also uh, propose that we investigate how the process was uh, conducted uh, and hold off on um, hiring for the Rumley position because um, once the hire is done, it can't be undone, not undone easily. Um, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Kari? Um, I, I have a lot of thoughts about this, including um, in response to Chris's points, but I, I only want to go if it's appropriate to engage in that. I don't know if that's the thing that we should be doing at this time. So I, I, I'm going to suggest to the board and very infrequently also and my computer is about to to die that that we, you know, we are doing our very, very best to to be uh, to to stay on our roles and responsibilities, and still it doesn't mean that we're not listening to the community because we care about the community. We have very uh, if we if we're going to be an effective board and give the authority that our administrators need to make the best decisions in behalf of us, we need to not undermine our our leaders, and we would be setting uh, a pretty bad precedent. Uh, by, by doing that. That doesn't mean that we're not hearing our, our, our community, but we know that our administrators do are really, they're, they're thorough. So I would propose that at a later date, we can look into a, a, how do we hire, right? We just had this great conversation right now about diversifying our educator workforce. We can have a conversation of what do we, how do we, uh, how our process of hiring work, right? And uh, it, as, as people have participated before in uh, in uh, in hiring committees, right? We unless you're part of that hiring committee, it's really hard to know all the ins and outs, and and that's why we have administrators. That's why we empower our administrators to do that uh, for us. Um, so I would encourage us to not change the process uh, right now, uh, Diane. So I, I'm not. I'm not wanting to question the process. However, I don't understand what my role is, I guess. And, I, and I'm not trying to micromanage, but when questions are raised to me, and I apologize, Kari, if this is kind of like, it, I don't mean to get into it. However, I don't understand what my role is if I hear from community members. And it, you know, if, 
if the process was followed, that's all I need explained to me. I'm not trying to micromanage it. I'm trying to understand it. And it, it I'm not, I'm not in the day-to-day work like families are, like administrators are, but I am a board member. And I guess I'm confused as to um, when the dialogue stops. And it's not about, um, I mean, we just went through some battles around transparency. And I guess that's that's all um, I need to know. I'll be very upfront. I worked with with the candidate for a number of years. I know her very, I mean, I, I know her. So it's not that I'm questioning any of those parts. I'm just saying when questions are brought up to us as a board, how do we get at an understanding so that we can remain neutral as we're supposed to um, while knowing that we're not, um, Again, we just struggled through this last year, trusted the process and it fell apart for us. So I don't know where to go with this. So I I would suggest that the the place to do this is at a separate board meeting. We we would have an agenda item and and possibly uh, later on, right? When we start the year, uh, I'm gonna let Kari speak and Lindy speak before I continue to speak. Uh, Lindy and then Kari, since you haven't had a chance to speak, Lindy. Yeah, I, I think what I want to say is that in response to Diane, I, th- I think our the way we think about this issue should be guided by our policy until we change that policy. And the policy that we should all look at is B20. Has, it, it deals with uh, personnel recruitment and selection. And if you read through that, it's very informative. It's, it's what we've said about, um, about this topic previously. And there are some sort of general characteristics that we said that we should be looking for. And there's some very specific limitations on or requirements of the hiring process. And um, I don't think that our, our default position is not to second guess and not to scrutinize these, these, um, these decisions because there, we do have a lot of trust. We did hear a bunch of concerns earlier um, tonight, um, but as I, consider those in terms of the policy i didn't i don't think that any of those concerns were really at a policy uh, our the level of i think they're pretty much all at the procedural level um for example if there's problems with the cba um that that will be dealt with at the procedural level so um i think we should keep that in mind and um and and i think that the other thing to remember is that Obviously, some people disagreed with the recommendation, with the judgment that was made by the leadership team. I think reasonable people can disagree on on the on judgments. Um, our role is to just make sure that our policy is being followed. And and again, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm no interest in in micromanaging this decision as long as that happens. Thanks. Thank you, Carrie. Lindy. Um, I was just wondering, because it's a personnel manner, matter, um, if there is concern that something that we need more information as a board, is that something that we can, we should or can go into executive session to get more information? Not about deciding the candidate necessarily, but the if we have questions, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to hold on that, McKaylin, and then I'll answer McKaylin. I don't really know if I have anything new to add to this, but I kind of just want to second what Diane said, which is, um, and Chris, I guess, or sorry, Kari, um, you know, I I agree, you know, we have, we shouldn't be micromanaging um, the process, but it is a little overwhelming to hear all this community concern and not get um, a response, a reassuring response that um, the procedures were followed correctly. Um, so it, it it feels a little uncomfortable to be approving a hire when um, when I have, when we haven't really heard a response. That's all. <laughs> uh, Chris. Yep. So um, I'm not interested in micromanaging um, the selection process. Um, I am interested in responding to community concerns. 
um, because those are the folks who are going to be living with the decision that's made. Uh, they, uh, you know, I think what we don't have um, an awareness of is the different procedures that each school has used for their search committees. Uh, and it sounds like the procedure that had been in place at Romney uh, was not followed. And to, so, you know, maybe we have to have a uniform procedure for how search committees are constructed, um, how many recommendations are forwarded to the superintendent for the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, but it sounds like the procedures that had been in place at Romney uh, were not followed. And, and I think we are, um, you know, it's not a micromanagement issue. I think it is a listening to our constituents um, and the individuals who are actually be living with the decision issue. And we have, we have the oversight authority to do it. Um, so that's, I feel pretty strongly about this. And we need to respond to our community members. Thank you. Maggie. Um, my concern is with having heard um, similar concerns from community members in years past about um, community participation on hiring committees. So it's alarming to me to be hearing this um, as a seemingly persistent concern. And, and I'm talking over like the past decades. So this isn't a new um new situation um so it just it it it's rubbing me the wrong way i am concerned okay uh, so i i think the the, the uh, item one, to this uh, dennis and then chris room. i am um, okay I just, go ahead. The, uh, chris wait oh, go ahead. Dennis. i'm waiting I, I don't i don't disagree with chris's assertion that we need to support our constituent groups. And I, at the same time, however, I'm not sure that I've heard anything um, that really indicates that the, the appropriate process wasn't followed. I, I don't know what that was. And so maybe that's what the discussion needs to be about where, if there was a um, misrepresentation of the process, which is sort of what I've heard from the folks in the community that seem to have said that there were sort of a, a proposal laid out and then the actual action didn't meet the proposal that was presented to the community, um, I, I think that would be important to talk about, but I don't, I, I've, I'm not sure about what parts of the process or what parts of the procedure weren't, weren't allegedly adhered to. And so I, I think it's, we need to be careful that we're not um, mishearing the concerns in a way that if, if there was a process issue, I think that's an important component to reconsider or to consider. But I guess I, I don't know, no one has identified for me what parts of the process were inappropriately, uh, allegedly inappropriately presented or followed up on. So that's sort of my concern is I don't quite understand the specificity that um, I think we would need to have in order to really look into um, the process. So I'm, I'm looking for a little more specificity around that. I also want to just remind folks that as Flora had said earlier that you know, our, our jobs are to support and um, monitor the policies and procedures that are set forth for the administration. And so if I don't, if I haven't heard anything that challenges that, um, I would need to hear some more specific um, commentary on that before I would be willing to, to venture a, a determination one way or the other. So that's where, I'm, where I am. Thanks. Chris, then Maggie, and then Natasha. Okay, so um, in, in response to Floor's suggestion that we put it off and then have a discussion later, um, when, when there's a hire at stake, waiting is too late um, because once the person is hired, uh, they're in place and the process, however flawed it may have been, um, is, is just not, not fixed um, for that particular hire. And the then to, to your point as to what the process um, was not adhered to, to my understanding, based on some of the communication from the letters that we had, is that uh, there seemed to be uh, expression that it was going to take a lot more time uh, for the search, requiring large chunks of participation, 
um, and it would be in person, and that those that structure did not pan out. It was different. It was a different structure. Uh, that the committee was explicitly told there would only be one recommendation. There would be actually they weren't going to make a recommendation, uh, and normally the committee. Um, does recommend two candidates to the superintendent with preference for one, and that, that apparently they were explicitly told that that wasn't going to happen. And so, and, and there's, there's a strong component here of, of the um, people who've spoken out thinking that two good candidates were passed over, internal candidates. Um, and, and so I think those are the concerns, um, and I think they're valid concerns. And I think there's some, that's something we can do something about. Thank you. Maggie and then Natasha. I just wanted to add to what Chris said that in the letter from the union, um, they also mentioned concern about the use of a rubric um, for scoring candidates. Natasha. Yeah, I had a question. Um, one of the one of the community members mentioned a concern that the um, the contract may not have been followed. And if that's the case, and there's a violation of the contract um, and the association chose to pursue that after we had make, made a recommendation to, if we made a recommendation to accept this, um, this recommendation, th this person, what happens? So if, if the association pushes it, and there is a violation. What is what? What's the process? I'm you know I'm, I'm new to the board. I don't know if that's something that's coming you know up before. So I'm just curious what would happen with so, that. So I'm I'm a little concerned that we are getting out of out of topic right now. I think if the association wanted to bring uh, you know if a lawsuit or whatever, I don't think our administrators would ever be putting our district at harm. Right. So. It, you know, of course, we could ask we could ask Jan to you know give us all of the the process. What it was that is not our job. You know, when we hire Jan has been hiring for our district for 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 years. We have been setting processes on how to be better at hiring. Right. I am really concerned that we are setting a bad precedent of how to operate as as a board. Right. We don't have all the ins and outs of of the of the hiring committee. This is not gonna create, I, I guess we could ask the specific question to Jen, was the process follow, yes or no? But talking more about, about that, it is not our role and we would be undermining our administrators and, and that's why we hire them, right? Jonas, and then I'm gonna move on. Thank Go you for ahead. saying that, Floor. The hiring is done when the superintendent forwards a recommendation to the board. So the buck stops first at Jen and she passes it to us and we can either take it or not. So I would like to pose the question to Jen. Was policy followed? Um, was the policy followed? And given that Jen has forwarded us this recommendation, I have to believe that Jen has confidence in the process and the procedure. So I would like, based on what Kari said, and having looked at the policy at his recommendation, I would like Floor, someone to ask Jen, was policy followed here in this case? Jen, would you mind just answering yes or no? It's, it's yeah. the what? Yeah. Thank you. She said yes. I, I didn't hear that because Chris said something. Okay, so Chris, can, can, you, can you repeat call, that? Please? Yes, we have policies and procedures and they were followed. Thank you. So with that, I'm gonna uh, move us on. Uh, Lindy, oh, Chris, you have a new question? I do, after Lindy goes, after everyone else goes, I'm, I'm not trying to cut in line. No, I... I think mine was to make the recommendation to the board is what Floor was calling on me for. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. I'm going to ask Jen, um, were you actively involved in the search committee, Jen? I don't serve on the search committees for the teachers, but I have been consulted uh, as necessary. And we have, you know, standard procedures that we follow. Okay. And 
De you Chris, I'm going to I'm going to stop you here. I'm very infrequently. I, I try to not have board members have their their opinion, but this is not in our in our it's not an interrogation for for Jen. There are no, there are processes floor. and she's answered the question. So floor. Um, you know, you you asked the question to get a certain to get a response and yeah. fairness can explore the response. Um, but just you, you, not proper to cut off a factual Wait. question, a factual question um, when we're just making an inquiry. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, Jen, I will not follow up anymore at this time. Uh, Ursula? I guess mine's sort of a procedural question because this feels like we're getting into the realm of holding a hearing in public yeah. with and only one side okay. and I feel like it's not our procedure or policy and it leaves me confused as a fairly new board member. Yeah, this is really bad precedent and we should have never got ourselves into this point. So uh, with that, Lindy, could you please uh, move the personnel? Yes, um, I make a motion to accept the new teacher nominations for the 22-23 school year. Shannon Miller, Berlin, Veronica Eldred, Rumney, Julie Marie Bristol, Berlin Callis, David Kirk II, Music, Berlin Callis, Anthony Tony Snow, U32 Rise, Heidi Schmidt, Berlin Callis. Second. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you, uh, Kari. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Because of the motion as a slate, I am voting no. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I have to vote no against the slate because that's how it was presented. But for the reasons I've thank expressed you. before, I am voting no. Okay, thank you. So, any abstain? I'm going to abstain. I'm gonna abstain. So, we two have abstain. two abstains. Did I get that right? No. Two, uh, three? Three abstains, and then I'm gonna have uh, the boards do the. Can you raise your hand? The ones that just voted yes, because I know it's a little confusing. So I have the seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. Yeah. So the yeses have it. The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Resignations, Lindy. Yep. I make a motion to accept the following resignations. Brian Flynn, U32, Amy Ackles, maybe, Berlin, Lisa Hanna, Doty, William Mitch Pauley, U32, Eric Bennett, U32, Holly Carroll, Special Ed, Ben Heinz, U32, Skylar Washburn was a new hire rescinded. Thank you, Lindy. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any in, any comments or thanks? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the resignations as read, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. I don't, am I missing any, guys? I think that's all in that page. So yeah, moving right, Jen, could you give us an update on the vacancies, please? I will, sure. So we're um, obviously in the middle of hiring. We have some positions that we're still looking for for next year. We have a number of special ed positions that are unfilled, and we have few applicants right now. So we're beginning to have conversations about what that might mean for how we would operate if we're unable to fill those positions. Um, we also have some speech language pathology um, positions still unfilled. A couple of classroom teachers that we're still looking for. 
And, um, and again, just like there was an article in the paper the other day about um, a neighboring school system that has lots of vacancies and are being impacted and that we are not immune to that. So that is happening for us too. We're starting to think about how to be creative should we not be able to fill some of these positions. And I will continue to keep you apprised um, while I am serving in this role and it's my responsibility. The other thing that I wanted to let you know um, is uh, two positions that we're exploring. Um, I wanna let you know about them. We had had a plan to, um, to teach elementary health across three buildings this year and have decided um, really through this experience that that was not a viable uh, solution. So we're, we've anticipated, we've posted an anticipated elementary health educator in the hope that we can continue to do a better and better job and to see what the pool is like out there. Should we find a viable candidate, I will come to you with a recommendation um, that is outside of what we currently budgeted because I don't think that we had budgeted adequately. So we've had a recent resignation of a um, custodian who was a part-time custodian and we are exploring the possibility of coming to you with a request for a full-time custodian. We're still doing that level of analysis. We have been short-staffed for custodial issues all year. You mentioned earlier during staff appreciation that um, our, our custodial and maintenance crew has been working really hard. They cover for each other all the time and it might be that we need to come and have a full-time recommendation. So again, not currently budgeted, but needed and we'll do some more exploration and let you know. And the final thing I wanna say about vacancies right now is that um, those of you who have read uh, the U32 weekly email from Stephen know that he put something in there about just uh, housing. So that's the other thing that's impacting us right now is folks who have been interested in coming here maybe from out of state and they're having a hard time finding housing. So we're being impacted in that way as well. Um, again, that's not unique to Washington Central, but it is, um, it is making us a little bit concerned. So that's, that's the update on vacancies. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Lindy, questions? Jen, I've heard um, that there are over 100 special ed vacancies in the state. Is that true? Is that accurate? I, that's actually even a slightly lower number than what I heard. So yeah, special ed in particular is um, is a very hard position to fill, and we have a number of vacancies right now. Any other questions for Jen? There's a little hope that with the bill that just passed to allow retired teachers to go back to work that we are gonna see a little bit of help on that, but it's not for sure. Um, let's move on into uh, future agenda items. We, we've been trying with the steering committee that helps create the agenda to keep those uh, things that we're gonna look at within the next three months is at least what we're saying or the like, you. So there's just three there right now, a global citizenship, a, a student learning outcome that we're hoping to, to review. It's a superintendent evaluation, which we hope everybody was able to put in their input. As of last week, we didn't have everybody, so I hope everybody was able to submit their input. It, Carrie, do you have any updates on that right now? I, I think that's where we left it. Um. About about um, other agenda items or about superintendent? Superintendent evaluation, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah so um, yeah, so uh, the SBA School Board Association has been um, uh, administering the survey and it closed the other day. They let me know that I, I believe nine of the 14 board members filled this survey out, um, but we uh, got a very good response from the leadership team with 17 of 18. And, um, and then Jen. So we'll be compiling that data and that will be, um, as it says, an upcoming agenda item. Yeah, thank you, Kari. Uh, and then uh, and monitoring calendar. Are there any other future agenda items that board members have? It, it, Diane, sorry. <laughs> I was realizing that we really haven't talked about universal meals 
and the current legislation. And so I think that it would be important to put that on the agenda, especially as we get to budget time and considering those that that program. Thank you, Diane. All right. Down to 11. I was hoping to let you cut out early, but yeah, board reflection. Kari. Diane, why don't you go first? I, I well, Thank you, Kari. I was just going to say that I do appreciate the way, Floor, you kept us going. Um, you, you were saying you weren't letting us out early, but I mean, I slotted till at least midnight, so I think we're good, but... Um, you know, so I do, I think we were, we were moving on. I really appreciate the information that's provided in the packet because it really helps to, to keep us moving and, and thank you. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Kari? So um, it's been a couple of months, but I, I think it's probably time for us to do a, um, a meeting summary for Front Porch Forum. So I'd offer to draft that and work with the steering committee on it. So here are the topics I've identified, and then um, you let me know what else should be added. So the um, presentation from Alyssa Chen at five o'clock, um, update about uh, COVID-19 developments, um, our draft capital improvement plan, and I'm gonna need a little bit of detail about how people can still provide feedback um, um, on the plan. And then um, we adopted a parameter about for budgeting, um, I, I think it seems appropriate to say that we heard and discussed concerns about, uh, from community members about a hiring decision. Um, and then I um, thought it'd be nice to wrap by saying we received our final report from Anna and how we uh, congratulate and thank her for her contributions. So was there anything else? Board members? Hey, Kari. Um, now, we didn't talk about this, um, but I, I ran into a uh, staff member at Birch Grove, and she was saying how the summer school offering is expanding, it sounds like, in terms of participation. Uh, is that, Jen, is that accurate? We're offering the extended school year program as we right. have. But that it seemed like there were more participants this year than, than have been in the past. I need to get back to you about that, Chris. I'm not prepared yeah. to report just, numbers. Yeah. This is just that a comment on that be just to alert the community that this is an offering that we have during the summer uh, and, and that it's available, just as I mentioned. Maggie, I know, do you have something I to add? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to suggest Kari adding, or perhaps we do as a separate concern about housing. Um, I think when the emails are the front porch forum posts are long, the information gets lost and there's a lot of um, content in there. And I also, I'm just looking for a clarification on extended school year services um, being not, that's not an off, open offering to all students. It's available to students who, who require that in order to um, avoid um, losing my words at this hour, speech language pathologists losing their words, um, who, who may regress <laughs> or need the support to continue. It's not open to everybody, yeah. correct? Yeah, we, we can add that to our, Jen can, we, we'll put it as a future agenda item and add it to our agenda so that she can report back at our, maybe at our community when we have the smaller uh, meeting at the beginning of June. Is that okay? I, uh, I just feel poorly if people got the impression that they could sign their kids up for something that's yeah, no. available right. for students who need it academically. Yeah, I agree with you. So. Okay. Yeah, so we're again on public comments now. Are there any public comments? Okay, let me just see how many hands we have. So oh, we have one hand, two hands. Uh, Becca, go ahead. Hi again, still Becca, still a parent, um, and still concerned. And I, um, I think there's a lot of growing and challenges that we've 
all had to deal with as we figure out this move to the unified school district. And I think that this dis personnel discussion really highlights those challenges and how there's a lot that we really haven't resolved yet about how to operate effectively and respectfully as a unified school board and a unified school district when some of these decisions do seem to be that really impact children and the school and the community seem to be um, sort of cloaked in layers of bureaucracy that they didn't used to be um, sort of mired in. And I think that does make it hard for the board to be both respectful and responsive to the administrators that you've hired and to the community to whom you are actually ultimately responsible and you have a fiduciary duty to us as members of the community. And I want to say that I really believe that reasonable people can differ about whether the CBA was violated in this hiring process. And because I think reasonable people can differ about it, I do think the board has a fiduciary responsibility to the community and, and the district as a whole in the event that it is found to have been violated, because there's a lot of fallout that may come from that. And who knows if that's going to happen or not. But I do think reasonable people could differ. And I, I wish that it had been possible for the board to vote on these personnel issues separately so that folks for whom there wasn't any issue or concern could have gotten their new positions and started to plan for their school years. And for folks where there was some concern, we could have taken a beat and just figured things out and made sure we were making the right decisions and all the I's had been dotted and the T's had been crossed because I know we're all so busy and mistakes happen and things get confused and we're all just trying to do the best we can. And I just think sometimes taking a beat is really the best way to go. Thanks. Thank you, Becca. Hey, Hannah? Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate what Becca said. I appreciate um, you talking about it for the time that you did. Again, my concern is, is not content. Um, I agree. Decisions are made all the time and nobody is ever going to agree. Um, and one thing that we, we struggled really through last year and through the unification of the school board with transparency um, and clarity. And so um, I think that um, I'm I'm disappointed um, in how tonight went. I think it would have been totally possible, again, to have taken a week um, and to not have, um, uh, to have discussed things with Jen differently in executive session or whatever you needed to do. I think it was possible. Um, I think it was rushed. That's a lot of what happened last year. Um, and I know that um, that superintendent personnel change last year was a heavy lift for the board. And it created, created, it was disruptive, um, it, it needed to be. And I think there's a temptation now to not do it again, to just um, put all of our um, faith in administrators. And I, I get that. And I, I don't wanna disrupt, um, I don't wanna disrupt protocol. I, I think that that's not efficient and it's not respectful. Um, however, going forward, I think the, it behooves the board to decide um, what does procedure actually look like and if as a unified school district, you cannot have as much community involvement, um, if that's just not feasible, I think that that might be a hard pill to swallow, but then that needs to be communicated because you cannot say we're involving you and giving us these time um, commitments and then, and then change them. Um, so if we are a unified school district and decisions are made more separately from the community, I think that's fine. I think it just needs to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Lindy, you have a comment? I, I have a clarification a little bit because yeah. the, uni the unified school board is brought up and perhaps I'm misremembering from when I was on the East Montpelier board and there were seven boards. I believe our hiring, the committee still went to the superintendent and the superintendent brought it to the school board. Am I remembering wrong or is that true? It, that's true. Okay, so okay. it's not a unified school board change that yeah, and, of how we yeah, did and Lindy, it. Lindy, I, I just, uh, you know, like it's public I just comment. Wanted to, I, and I think the clarification, it's, it's good. We just made the clarification. Oops, sorry, my, even my earbuds are dying. Sorry guys, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it, you know we have heard the community. We I, it was a hard, uh, it, you know, it was not easy. We're trying to create the space for it all to have these difficult conversations. Uh, thank you for coming to the meeting tonight. 
it, we're not perfect. We're working to be imperfect, but this was the, you know, this, it, the, the board stands behind it, the decision that was made tonight as a democratically elected elected board. We, we're gonna continue to, to work uh, to, to be a united team and to you know, be sure that we're working towards what's best uh, for kids. And, and we're excited to, to have two amazing staff members uh, at, at Romney and to welcome a new staff member into our Romney community. So thank you for, for, for coming tonight. And with that, I'm gonna ask the board if there's a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Jonas. Second. Do I have a second? You have Ursula. Ursula. a second. Ursula. Ursula. Sorry, my earbuds keep, sorry. <laughs> all those, and thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. And, and leave. Thank you for being Bye. here today. Bye. 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 Bye.